Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Lumir Balhar, yeah. Uh, so who am I? A little bit about me. Uh, I am a senior software engineer in Red Hat, working mostly with Python and for Python. I'll describe it later because this is basically the whole talk will be about. Uh, I'm also a code of conduct team member for this year of EuroPython. Uh, I'm Python community organizer, organizing meetups for more than a decade now, and also PyCon Czech. Uh, I'm a medic in the Czech Red Cross, volunteer firefighter, drummer, and a couple more stuff. So staying close to me, it's probably making you safer above average. <laughs> That's probably not the best thing to say before a social event, but you know what I mean. So what's the motivation of this talk? Uh, at the beginning of my career, I was a Linux administrator, which meant basically administrating hundreds of Linux machines and installing thousands of packages from a Linux distribution every single day. And I knew it's open source, right? But I have no idea what uh, amount of work is behind every single RPM package. And I'm going to tell you today what amount of work is behind Python you are probably using every day. So that's about me and about the motivation. And now we can take a look who you are. I'm not a magician, neither, nor the uh, LLM, so I'm not going to guess. But statistics is clear here. So when it comes to software, and when I say software, I mean something which might be on the left side too new and untested and unstable, unstable for you, and on the right side, something which is too old and too featureless, and so you are probably somewhere in the middle. You want something which is tested, you want something which is new enough to have the features you want, but you also want something which is still supported, right? So you are probably somewhere in the middle of this bell curve, but we are on both sides in both extreme. We are working on the one, one side with the latest possible software in Federal Linux, and with not that fresh, I would say, but still supported software in enterprise distributions. And I'm going to tell you why it's uh, interesting and maybe important for you and how you can all benefit uh, from the work we do. And when I say we, I mean the, all of the Linux administrators, all of the Linux maintainers and creators. So it's not just about Fedora, CentOS, RHEL, whatever. It's about every single Linux distribution, every single Linux maintainer. And where are the maintainers when it comes to code flow? They are usually the invisible people in the middle, uh, typically invisible, un until you know, something breaks a lot. Then you know that there is a maintainer who will take care of it. But usually, invisible people in the middle. On one side, you have Python on this conference. And for this specific example, you have Py Python core developers. Uh, in upstream, on the other hand, you have users downloading, installing RPM packages or on any other kind of packages. And in the middle, there are Linux uh, developers and distribution maintainers. Quite a lot of invisible people with a lot of work to do. So I started as a Linux administrator. Then I switched job a couple of times, working on networks and stuff around, and then I have the opportunity to join the team maintaining Fedora Linux distribution. And uh, what I can tell you, Fedora loves Python, really. We are trying to make the Fedora distribution the best distribution for Python developers ever. And you can benefit from our effort, uh, even if you are not using Fedora at all. I will describe that in later. So when I say Fedora loves Python, I mean it. A lot of them, really. Well, <clears throat> you know, 2.7, not that much. And there is always one, the main one, the main that is a base for everything else in the Federal Linux distribution, the specific release. I will talk about it in a bit. But it doesn't really matter whether you are developing Python software for very old Linux distribution or very fresh ones or whatever is your deployment, whatever is your architecture, you can probably find the right Python version in Fedora. So you can use Fedora as a developer machine. You can develop the software, test it there, and then you can deploy it basically anywhere you want. And it's not just about the amount of Python releases we have. All all of them at the same time. It's also about a speed a little bit, because Fedora 
is basically the first one when it comes to fresh releases. And as you can see in the slide, it took us only four days to package the first alpha of Python 3.14 last year. It took us another four days to package or to update to first beta. And when the final release came out, it was at the same day in Federal Linux, which is very important. Uh, you might think, oh, this is all the, you know, uh, add for, for Federal Linux, but it's not. You can benefit from that as well, and I'll show you in a minute. And you might think, why should I be interested in alpha releases of Python, right? They are usually releases a week after the final release of the previous version, like 3.12 final is out, and a week after 3.13 is alpha 1 is out. That's true, but you have to count with five months of development included in the five, uh, first uh, alpha version, because after the first beta of the Python development cycle, there are no new features allowed uh, in Python. Wink, wink. <laughs> so, um, well, and when I'm saying that, it, it's important because it's our world, basically. It's important for us, but it might be a lot of benefit, it might have a lot of benefit also for you, because we are packaging those stuff into Fedora, that's true, but we are also providing those uh, tools to you, and we created something we called Fedora Python Talks, which is obviously a combination of Fedora, all the Pythons available on, on top of Fedora, and the Talks, which is uh, kind of important tool in testing of Python applications and libraries, because it can basically take uh, all the Pythons you have installed, all the different versions of li libraries you support, create a huge matrix and test it in the different environments. It's really, really interesting. So you have Fedora as a base, you have all the Pythons there, you have talks on top of it, and all, all um, fit into a container, Fedora uh, Python Talks, you can download it, you can use it in your CI CD systems, you can use that for testing. Which means that even if you're not using Fedora at all, you don't like Fedora, you prefer the Debian syst Linux systems or whatever, you can still take that container and test with the first alpha version four days after it was released upstream without the need to compile it for your own. You can test with all the bunch Pythons from two, <coughs> 3.6 <laughs> and to 3.13 and very soon 3.14 alpha 1 in a couple of months. So that's for developers. And where is the benefit for regular user? Why? That's a kind of different story. As I mentioned earlier, uh, there is always one main Python, the thing that runs when you type Python 3. And that's important because even if you are just a regular Linux user, uh, it runs a lot of tools you might not know about, uh, but it's a baseline for everything else in the distributions. And that's a completely different story because if you package a Python as an alternative one, like free six, it's just a Python. It's there, you can use it to develop your software, test it, whatever you want to. You can create a virtual environment, install all your dependencies from PyPI to virtual environment, and it just worked, that's fine. But from the main Python in Federal release, the situation is completely different, because thousands and thousands of packages depend on Python in, in the Linux distribution. And it's not just the case of Fedora, uh, which means that we really be careful and it takes a lot of time to prepare new main Python for next Fedora release, basically, because there are 4,500 RPM packages that need Python to build, and there is 5,600 RPM packages which needs Python to run. Those are huge numbers, and again, it's not just about the Linux distribution, it's about the benefit behind all that for you all. And that has to be ready when we finally switch the Python from 3.12 to 3.13 or any other new release you can imagine. And that preparation for a switch is basically 12 months of continuous work rebuilding all the packages. We have to rebuild all of them because the packages contain the PYC files, the caches, which might be completely different in the new Python versions, and we have to do that. So we are rebuilding them and we are, of course, finding bugs, right? Because uh, 
there are people like Victor, and Victor likes to remove stuff from Python. So uh, it sometimes breaks something, and I would say oftentimes. Uh, so you, so we are rebuilding the, all the packages, all the thousands and thousands of packages in the federal distribution, and we are finding bugs, and we are finding bugs with alpha one, which is something you think it's completely not important, com completely uh, something you don't want to care about, but we do, and we are not just rebuilding them and finding the bugs. We are reporting the bugs upstream, I mean on GitHub or any other uh, tool like that you might imagine. We are fixing the problems right away. We are sending the pull request. We are get, taking that patches back to federal distribution to have it ready for our users and so on and so forth. And those are countless, like hundreds of bugs, hundreds of pull requests filled every year just to make the whole Python ecosystem ready for the next major Python release. And that's really something. So when you install Python 3.13 final release in October this year, we already spent 12 months testing that and filing bugs and preparing, preparing it to work. Well, well, sometimes it works, like, yay, you are so nice sending a pull request to us. That's good. I, I can merge it right away and release a new version of, I don't know, PyTest, request, or a free image in some popular library. Sometimes it's not that nice. Alpha 1, why, why do you care or Alpha 1 close and don't bother me, please. Send me text message when beta comes out. So uh, af after all of that work, we are finally ready to switch the main Python in specific federal release, and that means that new versions of Python are usually faster than the older ones. So that's benefit for all the users. Even if you are just using some application, maybe GUI application or CLI, it will probably run faster, it will be better, it will consume less memory, all the benefits. So that's the benefit for the regular Linux users. And not just them, but for the basically whole Python community. So, and after that, you might think, all right, 12 months, quite, quite work. You tested all of them, like thousands of packages. Nice, send some pull requests. So after the release, you can finally rest and sleep, right? Well, I would like to say yes, but no. <laughs> the problem is that after we do all this work into federal distribution and upstream, we have to do it also for more enterprise distributions, some open source ones, like oh, all of them are open source, but some completely open ones like CentOS Stream and Red Hat Enterprise Linux as well. And that's completely different. Like the package set is obviously much smaller because it wouldn't be feasible to support thousands and thousands of RPM packages written in Python in the enterprise distribution. That's not possible, but they are basically the same problems for all three of them, but different solutions we have to come up with. And there is one, the biggest one, scary one, <laughs> and that's the support. Uh, on one hand, as I mentioned earlier, uh, on one hand, if you are on one side of the bell curve, you want uh, the latest, the greatest software, everything fresh, new versions, and that's awesome for us, and it's kind of, let's say, easier for us, because when uh, a security vulnerability is found in a software, upstream usually fix it, or we fix it for upstream, depends, or anybody else, it's open source, you can all fix it. And then they release a new version, say, hey, it's fixed in that version, and you can just mm, rebase it in the Linux distribution, and that's great. And we can do that in the federal Linux, and that's fine. And again, we are helping the ecosystem by fixing those bugs, proposing the changes and taking the patches back to federal distribution or updating to the latest version. But on the other side, for the enterprise Linuxes, there is a completely different promise. Like, we don't need it to be fresh. It might smell a little bit, but it has to be secure. Like, make sure it's stable and make sure it's safe. That's all we, all we ask. And that's kind of challenging because the really cycle of federal distribution is twice a year, in fall and spring, and that's fine. And the support for N minus one ends a week after N plus one is released, 
Am I right? And it's recent, and it doesn't really matter. Every half a year there is a new Fedora. But that's not true for enterprise Linux, right? Nobody from enterprise wants to update Linux distribution every half a year. They wouldn't do anything else on hundreds and thousands of machines. And that brings us to interesting problem, an interesting collision, because when you, uh, on the table on the left shows you which Pythons are the main in which uh, enterprise Linux version which is, might be important, you can see that 3.6 is in RHEL 8, 3.9 in RHEL 9, and there are also alternatives. So also in the enterprise Linux, you can use different Python versions, not just the main one it was released with. But the problem is that the enterprise Linux has much, much longer support, like 10 years, and maybe more if you have enough gold, you know. So, but the basic is 10 years. And what, what now, like upstream support for Python 36, for example, ended in September 2021, and our support for Enterprise Linux 8 will end in 2029. It's eight years, eight more years, when uh, they will slowly remove the branch from the GitHub repository and slowly forget about the famous Python 3.6 release. By the way, the first one with F strings, so that's why this one is famous, right? And, and that's ongoing, that's a, that's a rolling wheel. So we have something we wanna keep stable, and we, on the one hand, can rebase and update and do everything, and people are ready for a new software, but on the other hand, they wanna keep it stable, and that's a problem. And I'll show you why, or I'll show you two examples. of the same problem, the upstream solution, the Fedora solution, and the enterprise solution. So the first one is CVE 2021-23336 in Ural Lip. The number is not that important, and if you have no idea what the CVE is, it's basically just an enumeration of security vulnerabilities, so they are hard to remember. And the second number, the, basically the first number, the second part, is a year it was registered for that specific number, and it's just a counter. So the problem with that vulnerability was, uh, discovered in Python itself, that uh, double, double free c Consortium recommends using ampersand for, as a separator, for, in URL-lib for different key pairs, like, uh, if you have a URL, as you can see in the slide, and there is a key value, key value, key value, they can be separated by either ampersand or semicolon or both. And the recommended way was to use only the ampersand, of course. But somebody discovered that in Python, by default, both like semicolon and ampersand are both allowed. And that might be a problem, because when Python communicates with a different application and they use a different setting, it might mean a different thing on a different level, like for proxies and web caches and so on and so forth. So that's a problem. How we can solve that? Well, upstream says that if the recommendation is to use ampersand, let's switch to ampersand, like mm, now. <laughs> okay, that's one way how to <laughs> look at that. But uh, we can kind of do the same, maybe, maybe not. So uh, in Fedora, we have decided to do the same, basically, and we not just updated the supported releases of Python to the latest version, which included the fix, and it was fine, so we can say that the vulnerability is fixed on our side as well, but we also took the fix from the newer Pythons and backported it to older ones. So basically the Pythons in Fedora and also in your CI CD systems very soon, wing wing, are in better shape than in upstream because it's fixed. We fixed it also in the unsupported versions and that was fine. But the problem is that the change is backward incompatible, right? If you have a software for, I don't know, something enterprise, let's say. I can disclose the detail later. Uh, so if you have enterprise software, uh, you cannot do that. You cannot just switch the default and hope that it will work like we are talking about banks, right? So um, it might not work like that. It might not be simple. So what we decided to do on the enterprise level is that we uh, 
decided to adjust the patch from upstream to keep the old default, the old behavior, allowing both uh, ampersand and semicolon, but showing you the warning if you use that default. So if you are proactively changing that behavior in your code, that works fine and you can do that and nothing happens for you, but if you are with the default, it will show you a warning in the log files and if you are debugging the applications, you will see that, oh, don't, don't do that. Really, don't use the default, set one or another, but don't, do, um, don't use the default, don't use both. So, uh, and we basically provide uh, multiple, multiple ways how to set the default because sometimes the enterprise are not really allowed or able to change the application they are running, even they are written in Python itself. Like you have a bunch of very old code full of spiders and nets and whatever, rats, and you don't even touch it. Like I, I don't want to, please don't make me. So for enterprise, we are usually provide a way how, to, how they can reverse the change or how they can set the default some, default some other way, but please don't make us change the code, don't make us touch the application. So you can do it in the Python code itself, right? That makes perfect sense. You can do that in the config file, in etc for the whole system, for the whole machine. And you can also do that as an environment variable, which makes it possible to do that for single user or stuff like that. So that's it. Single problem, but multiple different solution. And our goal is to make sure that everything is secure. Whether you accept new version, you are using the latest Fedora with old Python, you are using enterprise Linux, CentOS stream, whatever. Our goal is to make it safe and we are usually also participating in the discussions about the possible ways, possible solutions. And that's gonna be next example. As I mentioned, the second part of the CVE is the year it was registered. And it was fixed um, 15 years <laughs> after the registration year. The problem is that the tar file module uh, directory traversal, which means that if you have specially crafted tar archive, it can be used to uh, you know, rewrite something on your system because it's powerful, right? It was used to uh, backup the whole systems on the tapes, so it have to be capable of backupping simlink, hard link, special files, and everything that Linux supports, which is not that used nowadays, but it was back then, and the format is still the same. So the format is powerful, and it's well documented, so when somebody requested to register the vulnerability that is possible to take the tar archive and say Python extract that, it can destroy your system, upstream said, yeah, it's documented <laughs> that way. Read the documentation before you use that, and don't unpack untrusted sources, don't do that, man. <laughs> It's really, really bad idea. And we agreed with that, right? It's documented, it's the same situation, like PyAML, please don't use PyAML and the default loaders and stuff around. It's everything is documented, but people don't read, usually. So it might be a good idea to have a safer default. If you wanna use something special about tar files, you can, but it might be a good idea to be, have a safer default. So Peter, Peter Victorin, here on EuroPython as well, our former colleague uh, is now hosting the keyboard open, open space, uh, decided to fix that problem and it required to write a PEP and it did that while we were in the same team. That's why I can talk about it right now. So uh, the, he proposed that, okay, let's have a different levels of trustiness in the tar file archives and one can be fully trusted, so I know what is, what is inside, how special it might be, I know what's inside, and I fully trust the tar I have. Another might be uh, to sub the tar means to support all the features Linux have, and the data is please extract only fires, but don't do anything special to my systems, don't overwrite AC ETC passes and stuff like that, right? So he proposed that PEP, it was accepted, and there is a deprecation period in Python 3.12 and 3.13 saying that if you use the default, it's a bad idea, you should switch because the default will be different in the Python 3.14. And uh, it will be then uh, the f only the fully trust, oh, sorry, it's a, the default will be data uh, then. So what we can do in Fedora, uh, 
we just update it basically uh, to the latest version of Python where the fix is implemented and also fixed all the unsupported Python releases. So again, they are in the better shape than upstream. Uh, but the enterprise, we, are, we were even more strict. We implemented the fix and uh, patch, patch it to be, to, so the default uh, is the same as it will be in the Python in a year. To be as safe as possible because this vulnerability was kinda, kinda critical. So Linux maintainers and Linux distribution developers are also part of those discussions and part, parts of those solutions. So what's the summary, what's the final take from that is that hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of bugs are resolved even before you can imagine them. Even you can first can run, run the Python code, the bugs that might be in your favorite library are already solved because somebody spent 12 months testing that. Contributors help also you prepare your application and libraries, especially if they are packaged somewhere, some in some Linux distributions or some other distribution format. Uh, you can benefit from the work we do in Fedora Everywhere. It's just just about the fixed bug. But if you really, if you are really interested about new Python's and you are really pissed off how long it takes for GitHub Actions and all the other CI providers to include new Python's, Fedora is way really. Uh, and it's, it's ready to, to be deployed to your GitHub Actions and used with the latest, greatest Python. Uh, if you want to, I don't know why, but if you want to, you can use the single Python version for decades. But there are so many nice features, right? Yes. Don't do that. Uh, update instead. Uh, and the, the final thing is that the enterprise Linux distributions are not just built on top of open source. They are part of building open source. And that's something I didn't know back then as a Linux administrator, and I'm really proud of now. Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation. Again, there's a problem. Uh, thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, you can move to microphone. OK. So. I've, I, I remember reading something on the Fedora mailing list about the private Python version. So it was kind of surprising to me when you mentioned that uh, switching to Python, not switching in time might break the system. So can you elaborate a bit more about what the uh, private Python version in Fedora is about? I don't think there's anything like that. There's no private Python version in Fedora. Uh, okay. The Python, there is always one main Python, which everything else in the Fedora written in Python or based on Python runs on, and that's completely publicly available for everybody. So if you run Python 3 in your console, it will run the same Python as used by tools like DNF, let's say. So it's backed the, exactly the same thing. The, the only problem is that the alternatives are like alone, just the interpreters and nothing more, but the main Python have to work with together with all the hundreds of RPM packages. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so uh, it's time for coffee break. Enjoy it. See you at 3.30 p.m.